The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. Good evening. We now call to order the planning and zoning meeting for this evening, and I think I've found the secret to getting a full board in is to have inclement weather. So <laughs> I thank everyone for braving all the elements to get here. We'll begin with the adoption of the agenda. If anyone has any additions, changes, or otherwise to the agenda, please let me know. Otherwise, I would look for a motion to adopt the agenda, please. We have a motion. Second, please. Second. And is there any discussion on that? If not, all in favor of adopting the agenda, say aye. Okay. Aye. aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We will move on to the uh, move for the uh, regular meeting minutes from January 25th. And uh, once again, if anyone has any changes or modifications, I'd like to hear them. Otherwise, I would be interested in a motion to adopt those minutes. So moved. There's a motion. A second, please. Second. And a second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? If not, all those in favor of adopting the minutes say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously as well. We have a series of rules for public hearing uh, that normally at this time of the meeting I would go through. Since we do not have any uh, cases with the public hearing this evening, I will dispense with that and we will move on to cases that require no public hearing. And uh, we have one of those this evening. Uh, before we begin, I will just say a few things about that. The staff will introduce this meeting at the, po the uh, case at the podium. Uh, after the, our staff member uh, presents that, then the applicant has 10 minutes to come and speak to us on that issue. After that, the board may ask questions of the applicant, and we may ask questions of the staff. We'll discuss the case, and then we will uh, proceed further from there. There will be no public input. There will be no public hearing. So for our first and only case of the evening, uh, 15 REZ02, I understand Ms. Beerman is not here today. Wayne Nicholas is here to speak to us. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, board. Uh, this is a request to rezone about 22 acres of property located on Guernsey Trail and Kildare Farm Road. Well, he's As you can see on the vicinity map, the property is located on the east side of Kildare Farm Road, uh, just south of the U.S. Highway 1 overpass. Uh, it's also across from the Wake Med Cary Hospital. The property is an assemblage of the Ponderosa subdivision, which includes 13 lots and a total of 12 detached dwellings. The existing zoning on the property is residential 40. You can also see, it might be a little hard to see, but there is a thoroughfare corridor buffer or thoroughfare overlay district uh, running along the north side of the property adjacent to the U.S. Highway 1 right-of-way. Uh, the proposed zoning is to add this property to the mixed-use overlay district and zone it uh, mixed-use with an associated preliminary development plan. And that preliminary development plan the summary of it is shown here on the slide. Uh, there'll be a 100,000 square foot office building, uh, a 475,000 square foot life care community, and then buildings B and C would total approximately 80,000 square feet of office with some residential units 
uh, on the upper floors, or an alternative to buildings B and C could be a 150-room hotel uh, with 4,000 square feet of meeting space. The slide shows the preliminary development plan uh, the applicant is proposing. You can see here in blue is the proposed life care community. Uh, the green are the office buildings with a parking deck here shown in purple. This area here in the lower southwest corner of the property would be where the hotel would be located if those two office uses uh, were chosen not to move forward. Uh, I will point out there's a connection around the property here around the rear and it does go on to some adjacent property. Just so the board's aware, if, and it also crosses the stream buffer as you can see there too, um, if they're unable, if the applicant's unable to secure rights to develop that on the adjacent property or if they're unable to get a approval for a stream crossing, there would probably be two turnarounds built in accordance with town standards uh, at the end of these driveways on their, on their own property, which could require some reconfiguration of the buildings, just so the board's aware of that uh, when it comes in for a site plan if it were approved. Uh, as part of the preliminary development plan, they're also requesting some modifications to land development ordinance standards. Uh, the first would be a reduction of the thoroughfare buffer. Uh, that buffer along the northern property line should be 100 feet according to the LDO. They're asking to reduce that to 50 feet. Uh, the second modification would be to allow a sound wall or fence um, in areas where the thoroughfare buffer exceeds 50 feet in width. And the last modification they're requesting is the removal of two champion trees. Uh, one would be in the location of where the widening of Kildare Farm Road would need to take place, and the other would be in the area of the thoroughfare buffer where they're asking for the ability to uh, develop in that area. Uh, there'll also be some road improvements proposed uh, with this preliminary development plan. Uh, there will be intersection improvements and signal modifications along Kildare Farm Road with the intersections of Tryon Road, New Waverly Place, and Wake Med Drive. There will also be a new right-in and right-out access point on the property, uh, as well as some road improvements along Kildare Farm Road, some associated widening to uh, bring it up to the town's comprehensive transportation plan standards. Uh, the approved land use plan or the current land use plan for the property designates the uh, site for office and institutional uses. It's also within the Waverly Community Activity Center. The slide shows stream buffers on the subject property. Uh, these would be field determined at the time of site plan review. Uh, according to the Parks, Recreation, Cultural Resources Facilities Master Plan, there are no existing or proposed greenways or street side trails in the vicinity of the subject property. The town's Comprehensive Transportation Plan designates Kildare Farm Road as a major thoroughfare. There is a CTRAN uh, fixed transit route uh, along Kildare Farm Road, which goes along the front edge of the property, and there's also a triangle transit route uh, along Tryon Road, just south of the subject property. Uh, at the public hearing back in January, there were no speakers other than the applicant. Two council members did express a preference for the original permanent development plan, which was predominantly office use and upper story residential and some, a small bit of retail. Uh, they had also expressed uh, hope to hear more discussion about this and uh, regarding the benefits of the current proposal. Uh, as you may recall, this originally went to a public hearing with the Town Council in June of 2015 uh, with a different plan than being presented tonight. Uh, after following that hearing, uh, it never went to the Planning and Zoning Board. The applicant uh, decided to make some changes that are now being proposed on the current plan. So it went back for another public hearing before the Town Council back in January of this year. Uh, some other observations from the hearing, uh, there was some general discussion regarding the benefits of having a life care community and potential hotel near a hospital and medical offices. And there was also concern just that the adjacent subdivision should, to the east should be protected from the impacts of the development. And with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant for their comments. Good evening. I'm J.W. Sharon, the land planning consultant for this project. We're so appreciative to see you here tonight in this icy cold evening, us being the only case tonight, but thank you for that. Um, 
I have some information that's being passed around to you, and I'll uh, talk from that in a minute. Um, but just to give you some background, as, as Wayne stated, we've been in process now for probably 14 months. Uh, we went in with a Class A office project, and we had the public hearing after doing the comprehensive plan amendment to office and institutional. Following that public hearing, there was tremendous interest at the site and this location due to the facilities around the hospital. So we met with some potential users, and those users did come forward. And that began, we began to realize when you're submitting this PDP plan that it's very site specific and such that if we were going to have some alternate uses, we should address them now before moving forward and coming back. So we took a time out, we revised what we did, and we went to two or three staff reviews with giving comments and adjustments, and then we put the plan back in for a new cycle. We had our public hearing, and Wayne has outlined those um, for you from the comments. And so this document that I'm giving to you will kind of hopefully outline some of the things that they were looking for from that meeting. Well, if you look on that the first page, the main thing is the CR CCRC is the main change overall. And one of the things that you'll see here is from your Aging Issues Task Force report that you just had um, last year, and this was from your new Imagine Carry Plan and the amount of residents that are turning 65 each year. And one of the more important things is like, okay, is there a need for that and, and why? You know, what, what is the purpose of it? And if you look over, you know, looking at some of the, your current facilities that you have, you know, we got Glen Eyre from three to 10 year waiting list. You've got Walton Wood at capacity, Sear Stone, which is still actively being constructed, but it's at capacity already with reservations, even unconstructed as it is. So as you can see, in every year you're having more and more residents come to this area or, or age to this point. This facility is going to be a great benefit and support what you see as needs for care in the future. Um, also, too, by saying that, it's, it's a non-impact issue as it relates lowering your traffic over the original office plan, and it's a non-issue for your school system. Uh, if you look at the second page, it's a comparative analysis between the old plan and new plan. And one of the main things you can see that I want to point out is that even though you're adding 200,000 additional square foot over the original one, you're having less impact for green space. So your, your new plan is providing more green space than the old plan. The other part, as it relates to this, too, is the champion trees, as Wayne mentioned. The two trees that have only been identified now to be removed are directly related to access. Now, the two that you have, if you look on the northern portion of the new plan, there's a tree right there for that access. That access was requested by staff for safety reasons to have more than one point to get in and out, and it just happens due to spacing between those two access points, that's where it has to go. And then you have the other one here. All other trees on site at this point, staff is asking to not identify those for removal, that they will be handled on a site plan basis individually, such that the buildings can be adjusted to save trees as necessary when you get to that level of review. On your next page, too, this shows you the overall comparison <coughs> and, and areas that you have on site between the Class A office and, again, the area compared to what it will be now, the light blue on the revised plan is the area that will be strictly for the new CCRC plan for your health care and your living units. Again, one of, the, one of the things I think that really works well for the town is that, you know, we are reducing traffic overall by this change in use, but we are still committed previously to the same amount of traffic impact that was identified that we were going to do on this original plan, even though we're reducing it, we're going to do all of the same that we committed to before. The other next page shows elevation. A lot of you may not realize, because you don't really get the visual from that, but when you're at Kildare Farm Road and you look across this site, there's an 80-foot drop in elevation from Kildare Farm Road going down to the back of the site. So we are going to have to grade some of the site to get it where it's more appropriate to work. But as you can look from where you are at Kildare Farm Road, none of the buildings will exceed five stories. When you get to the rear of the site, quite frankly, you're going to almost be below grade when you're at the 1 in 64 pass that goes through. But as you are at the front part of it, you may see a building up, but as you go down, the buildings go below grade. 
on your next, just to give you an idea too, there was there was discussion about you know maybe what what it is like. I had described at the public hearing. It's a campus-like atmosphere. It's it's premium uh, support services for the hospital uses. These are pictures of the newest community that this person has done in the Wilmington market, just to give you a flavor of what that building is and the use type. Also, too, with the addition of the hotel, we're not saying that that is something that will be. We're asking for an alternate because, we, again, we feel that as people have patients or uses in the hospital facility, a convenient, walkable hotel might be a viable alternative at this location. So in conclusion, what we do see is while we did like the first plan, we feel that this is a better mix of uses, and it still supports everything that's going on in the area, and it makes it very walkable and supporting with the things around it. Thank you, and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. We're now open to asking questions of our applicant or of the staff. Does anyone have any questions? There was mention in the staff report um, of a potential connection or a desired connection to Keesler Drive. Is that something that uh, is still of interest now that you have that second opening? We, we have approached all of the property owners along this boundary to try to get access through. Um, some would like it, but most of it is going where the way Keesler Drive is done is private parking areas that exist that are maintained by those building owners. Um, none has committed to allow us to do that. But what we have done is if you see on the lower point here on your screen, those two red dots are points where we are going to stub streets directly to areas that if we can get consent, we will tie through. If we can't, it allows the town in the future in redevelopment of those areas that you can make that connection happen from that building if they redevelop their site. Okay, good. I, I just want to make sure that we weren't precluding that in some way. Um, and the uh, buffer to the um, to the freeway. What is the purpose of the buffer? I mean, I know they're asking to reduce it from 100 foot to 50. Mm. Um, is that buffer there to keep people on the highway from seeing the buildings, or to keep the people in the buildings from seeing the highway? Kind of serves both purposes. And by reducing it. I mean, is, uh, has it been reduced on either side of this property, or did they observe the 100-foot? I'm not, I'm, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Did the um, developments to either side of this, did they observe the 100-foot buffer, or are they also at 50-foot? Uh, the development to the east, you mean? Mm -hmm. I believe that was developed before the thoroughfare buffer was in place, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just looking to see if Mr. Elmer remembers. Okay. I'm just trying to picture what this will look like. Will it have a, a wall there? I saw something about a wall. Uh, they have an option for a wall. They, they're not committed to that as okay. of yet. I think they're, they've left that as an option on the table. And the homes to the east, they don't have a wall either? I, that I don't know. I'm not okay. sure. Any other questions? Well, maybe oh. Debbie could answer that because I'm, I'm interested in I'm what this is going to look like. I can address the intent of the wall. The wall only has come up due to the CCRC area before we were asking for a reduction. Mm -hmm. But the wall is just for the protection of that area that we see that might help buffer some noise if, the, if it's found that it's necessary mm -hmm. to make it a more protected environment. If you go down there now, even those houses, it's loud in there. And this wall that we're proposing to do, aesthetically and consistent with what you have out there now, nothing that's going to be ostentatious, nothing that's going to be eye-grabbing, but to help the site be more viable. The developer's here, too, and he may want to add a couple of comments to that because it's come up from some of the users on the site. Yeah, I had, I had read that may, that was one of the things asked about, I think, in the neighborhood meeting. Um, Kevin with Mangum Development. Uh, so the, uh, the sound wall has come up, and uh, we're trying to, to design it in accordance with DOT standards um, along the rest of the, uh, the US-164 corridor. And so the intent is to blend in with the same sort of panels. Um, so that's what we're looking to do. Okay, So, th but the neighborhood to the east, does it have a wall? Um, I 
think Thornwood does not, but other neighborhoods do. Um, this site was was not selected for a retaining wall or a, um, a sound wall because it didn't serve enough people in that community. Mm -hmm. There are only 13 houses or 13 pro uh, properties, whereas in other neighborhoods you'd um, you'd have a much greater impact with with okay. a sound wall. All right, thank you. Yeah. I do have a question. Yes. It looks like in the old plan, isn't there uh, the percentage of pervious surface? It looks like it's a better percentage or a lower percentage, or should I say a higher, whatever, a different percentage in the new plan. Um, is that true, or is that just I'm looking at colors and thinking that green means it's not pavement? Uh, in the old plan? Mm -hmm. It looks like there's a lot more green left in the new plan. I'd have to defer to the applicant if you, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> is there more? It's more open space and green in the new plan. In the than new plan, plan. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the new plan has more open space and green area than the previous plan. Anything else? No, we can't. I really like the fact that they brought up the aging task force, and the key, I think, words is affordable housing. I've been hearing a lot about we have probably more than – a population of over 60 is supposedly greater than our population of under 17 now in Cary, which I found mind-boggling. Um, but I, I really like the fact that we, I know we can't request it, but if it was affordable, that would be even better. <laughs> if this goes through, I'm not sure. Any other questions for the staff or for the applicant? I just have two. One um, follows up on... Uh, Carlos, uh, about the wall, I, I guess I should back up before I ask that question. Uh, it says zoning conditions in the application package, and then it refers us to the PDP. And I, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I know what zoning conditions we're actually entertaining tonight, because it's it's kind of out of character that we, we don't see them explicitly written as zoning conditions. So can right. you make sure we, we understand what zoning conditions we're looking at as part of this? And package? you're essentially adopting the plan. Or approving the plan, that preliminary plan. development plan. Uh, so, but now, as you notice, the applicant has some things on there listed as optional. So, like the the walls, for example, are optional. So they they if they decide they don't want to build them, they wouldn't be held to build you know to building them if they're shown on the plan. So that's why they call them as optional. So for the uh, part of the package that says requested modifications to development standards, reduction of the width of the buffer. Uh, removing the champion trees, and then, then item two says, a lot of construction of a noisy tanning wing, fence or wall, outside of the reduced width thoroughfare buffer. So where exactly would that be? And I realize allow means optional, but. I'll let the applicant's engineer explain uh, that in a little more detail. And this might just be a, a little technical detail. I just don't grasp, but it very much could be that. Hello. I'm, good evening. Good evening. I'm Brandon Moore with the site group. Um, it is a very important technical detail, I guess. Um, we've asked for the ability to put a wall on the outside of the thoroughfare buffer adjacent to US-1 because we've done acoustic studies that say uh, we'll get greater results with a wall on that side of the buffer than on the inside. We've also had other studies that show it may be more appropriate on the inside, which could be an option. It just depends on the grades, how the walls of the, the building face the road, it, or if there's open space out there. Um, we'd like to put, have the option to put it on the inside or the outside of the buffer. It's allowed on the inside. It's not explicitly allowed on the outside. If we did put it on the outside, it would shift the thoroughfare buffer in and still provide 50 foot along US-1. Uh, it's just... Um, allowing either location to be acceptable. Does that answer? That answers my question. I'm going to ask another one. I don't know if, if Mr. Nicholas would know this or perhaps the engineer, but we just heard a few moments ago that this wall would look congruous with other walls that are out there on US-1. Are they on the outside or on the inside? I mean, is it conceivable that one might look at a wall and it's it's here, 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 and then suddenly the wall's out here and then it's back? I'm, I'm just trying to get I'm not it. sure if they're in the right of way or just outside. I, yeah, I'm just curious. The, the other walls that you have out there right now are on the outside. On the outside. Okay, great. Thank you. 
If, if I may, uh, sure. I sent an email to uh, Ms. Bierman today asking about the particular distances for these walls. I never got a response, so I'm sort of going to assume that she's been ill. I apologize. Yes, yeah, she's yeah. out of the office today. I apologize yeah. for that. It would have been nice if it had been an out of office because I might have redirected my email to somebody else in the staff, and you all might have had a little more thorough answer to this question. Okay. Because I do think it's one of the issues that probably bug a few of us. It seems as if the wall along 64, and I live right off from the Walnut Interchange, okay. does vary in terms of distance from the highway to the actual wall. And in some places, it, to me, because I drove up and down it yesterday, it even looks like it's less than 50 feet from the, uh, whatever you call the shoulder of the highway. So it seems as if there has been some variation in terms of placement of those walls from the distance from the highway, and I have no idea what it is in terms of distance from any buildings that would be contiguous to the line of the wall, but it does seem to vary, and it does seem to be mostly on the, in the outside of whatever is adjacent to you, that. Yes, sir, Mr. Rogers, you are correct in that. And one of the main things that you'll see is the walls that were built with the widening of 64, one in 64, the ones that DOT put in, they were on DOT right-of-way property. And they're the ones you see close. The other ones that were built privately were not allowed to be put on that right-of-way, so they would be behind that controlled access point, and that's the ones you see recessed. There, isn't there an office park going in on the west side of 64 at Kildare Farm? I tried to find it on my list of prior so. REZ rezonings, but it seemed to me that there was a triangular property right there at the corner of the 64 southbound Cary Parkway. I mean, excuse me, Kildare Parkway, Kildare Farm Road, that little uh, green yeah. spot right where your cursor arrow is. In that area? We did, we did both sides of Kildare Farm a year or so ago. Correct. And I think we had an office development on that. On the west side of Kildare Farm Road. Well, yeah, on the west side, but I thought the, the east this was northeast, a, whatever corner where the cursor is now. That was actually the northern part near Wimbledon was a subdivision, residential subdivision. Is that a housing yeah. development? Yes. Yeah. And then okay. the southern part would be, uh, I believe, uh, assisted living facility. And that was just trees for the buffer. There was no wall there, I believe. I Do don't recall? believe they proposed the wall. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? No, I'll just go to my. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I just have one question, just so I can understand what's being in front of us tonight. I was had to deal with uh, the proposed zoning is being requested for a mixed use district, or is that already what it is zoned as? It's it's currently R40. So <coughs> it's that, currently R40. So asking, asking to put it into the mixed use overlay district, mm -hmm. and once you're in the mixed use overlay district, the only zoning classification you can ask for is MXD or mixed use. I see. So what else could a developer build in a mixed use? I mean, we're seeing before us a uh, hotel, office buildings, a uh, retirement I mean, community. Under this proposal, they're, they're bound by what's shown on this preliminary development plan. Okay. I mean, there are a variety of uses, commercial, office, retail, <coughs> uh, hotels are one. I mean, there's a lot of different uses, but with, with this zoning, with the MXD zoning comes a preliminary development plan. So you're bound by the preliminary development plan that gets approved with your MXD zoning. Okay. If they wanted to build some other uses, they'd have to come back and go through a rezoning process with a new plan. Okay. So with that, what we have in front of us just is basically there's a menu. I mean, there's basically three options, the developers, everything that could be either all commercial office with the uh, senior community or various options in terms of those office buildings as well as also a hotel in there? So well, they've, all, they've asked for the life care community and then 100,000 square feet of office and the remaining office allocation about 80,000 square feet. It, would, it could either be that or the hotel. 
mm -hmm. 150-room hotel. Okay. I just have one question. So if, the, if they go with the hotel, it cannot be any higher than five floors, correct? Uh, five stories or 80 feet, but that's for all the buildings on the property, not just the hotel. It could be even the office buildings could be five stories or 80 feet. Okay, thank you. That discussion actually reminded me of one thing. In the staff report, there was a table that showed, um, I guess, how this uh, PDP satisfied some of the requirements of the activity center. And I, um, it seemed like in the table, and I'm, I'm scanning through it really quickly to try to find it, it implied that there would be additional commercial I think there's just a, a, an error in the table, and I can send that to you if that matters before okay. town council. It looked like maybe it was for the previous plan. It, that's possible. You're, you're correct. I'll, I'll send you a note on that. It was just, it was a nit. The staff report was clear. It's just the table looked like it was going to this plan would increase commercial. Oh, table one, Waverly and Crescent CACs, combined development compared to land use. Proposed rezoning, scenario B would increase. Oh. oh, scenario A with no hotel, it shows it increases the commercial. That could have been left over from the previous the initial thinking, yeah. uh, proposal because it did have some retail in it. Right. Have any other questions? Anyone? Oh, I've got one. Yes, ma'am. This would probably go to the developer. Uh, regarding the potentiality for the 20 residential units, where do you think they would end up being placed on the site? And, and tell me how that sort of fits in, because it, in a way, I thought, oh, well, maybe that makes sense. And then I thought, no, it seems incongruous. So how does so, this fit into the uh, alternatives we're looking at? Sure. So when we began to narrow down some of the specific um, site plan uh, details, we looked at the second building um, from the bottom left as a potential true mixed use with some additional residences. Um, with some retail, but our, um, our our financial studies showed that retail really isn't going to work at this intersection, um, and the life care community will more than take care of um, you know residential applications. Part of that's also left over from um, some of us just wanting to live there at Waverly. We just we like the area, and uh, we like the the idea of being able to walk over to um, to Waverly. So, but I I. I would say that, that having the 20 units would probably not be feasible at this point. It's most likely going to go office. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Yes. I don't know how to put this in form of question this time, but there's a statement made that there's not a lot of hotel space around the hospital, but there is, isn't there? I mean, I know I'm thinking of a few right now that are right up the street, down over by the Regency. There, there are some hotels near the hospital, but... So once we okay this, this another hotel can go in here. There's no different rezoning. There's no guarantee. There's other, I mean, that's an option they have. They could either do office or a hotel. So that would be their choice. I have. You have a question? Yes. Well, it's not a question. It's just a comment. It, you know, we keep saying walkability. I sincerely hope that nobody tries to cross either one of those roads, Tryon or Kildare. That's, we used to have a person on the board who really specialized in cycling, and we had one for walkability, and we never talk about those things. But, you know, when we talk about uh, continuing care and the thought that there would be people out there who maybe couldn't sprint across Tryon Road in the few seconds that you're allowed, um, you know, I would hope at site plan that maybe some of those issues would be looked at. They will. Um, just as a comment in response to what you just said, um, I know from personal experience how frustrating it is sometimes as an out-of-town resident to go visit 
a relative that is in assisted living, especially someone who is transitioning from independent living to assisted living. Um, it always feels better when I'm close to the person that is my loved one. And although there may be hotels in the area, um, it's nice to have a hotel where, you know, a lot of, most of the people that are staying there, the hope would be is in connection with um, sick, sick relatives or loved ones in the hospital, as well as the um, assisted uh, living or skilled nursing component of this development. So I actually think that, um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily willing to say that a hotel would, would necessarily compete with other hotels in the area. They're primarily filled with a population of business people who are going to be in town for conventions or conferences or meetings. So I actually think it's a good thing to start considering having, um, having this kind of a model because so many senior citizens move here from other states with kids that are scattered around. So. Well, I have one last question, and I keep this uh, slide up right now. I would like to explore just for a second or two that situation you mentioned earlier where that loop around road to the far eastern end of the project does not occur for whatever reason, and these two turnarounds would, would uh, am I to assume that, that um, there, there would have to be some type of turnaround for emergency vehicles? What's that, sort of like just a circle that comes back on itself? Is, well, that, is that all that is? No. If, if you may, we have some sheets we can pass out to show you what that alternative would look like. Okay. If that doesn't. And while he's doing that, you can answer my second part of the question. I see two future connections down in the south end. Um, I'm not even going to say the C word. Uh, it hasn't come up yet, so we'll, we'll just not, not say it. But if the turnarounds do come into play, will that second connection, the one the cursor is pointing at right now, still take place? No. If we, that cannot be acquired since it's off-site. Okay. This diagram will show you what that great. looks like. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. main purpose of that too for of course as you're aware is for fire safety and turning the vehicles around to get for that purpose and if we did not have the turnaround it wouldn't meet your town standard so it's a necessary okay so um, okay the fire truck turnaround location there and there okay excellent and then everything else would just be as is and so we'd have the one connection that unless someone goes quasi-judicial or whatever, that would happen. They would have to provide stops to the yeah. south, yes. Okay. That's all I need to know. That's, that answers my question. And, and we're willing, if you want to add these a record to this as an alternative, if we don't get it, we're, we're, we'd like to do that. This document here? Yeah. Yes. I was under the impression that the turnarounds were part of it already. Okay, great. Thanks. So. Um, and thanks for not saying the word. <laughs> that'll, that'll get us out of here quickly. Uh, so does anyone else have any other questions? If not, would someone care to make a motion? Unless there are any questions at all? Any more for our staff or applicants? Then would someone care to make a motion one way or the other on this project? I'll make a motion. Yes. I move that uh, the board forward case number 15REZ02 to town council with a recommendation for approval. It is it, as it is consistent with a comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans and is reasonable and in the public interest for the reasons set forth in the staff report and presentation. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion, please, Mr. Rogers. Well, um, when I first looked at this, I was sort of uh, blown away by the fact that there was a 68 percent increase in the amount of square footage here. And so I, I kind of really tried to think this one out. And um, I certainly think it, it fits in with the <clears throat> land use plan. I think it fits in with the fact that it's a activity center. 
I think it fits in with the fact that you have a hospital on the other side of Kildare Farm Road. And um, to, to Sally's point, uh, I've gone through both my mother and father being in a nursing home and, a, uh, and, and what that's all about. And so when I thought about the alternatives that we were kind of, that we would be kind of agreeing to were we to approve this, the possibility of a hotel, the possibility of residences, uh, medical offices, et cetera, I kind of thought, well, this is a unique little blend, and I'm sure the developer has probably got enough expertise to know that things are going to work or they're not going to work, and people are interested in, in the demographics uh, justify the investment. So to me, uh, even though it seems as if the council may not have liked this plan and preferred more office, uh, I, I kind of like this a lot, and I, I hope the uh, board agrees with me. Uh, I think the, uh, the design is, is better. Uh, there is more green space than the original plan. Um, it would be nice if there was a connection to Keesler. But again, this is not a mandatory connection based on Kerry's requirements. Uh, so uh, I think this is a, a good step. I'm one of those people retired and uh, on my way to a convalescent home at some point in the future. And Kerry certainly needs uh, an added inventory of those. So uh, that's why I'm supporting this. Thank you. Well, Wayne pretty much said everything. Um, now, I've, I've done a little uh, research on Magnum Development. I think that um, they have an excellent reputation. I think it's a um, perfect use for this area, and I look forward to seeing the end product. Any other discussion on this motion, please? You know, I, I just chime in on a couple things. One is I spent, I think, like Wayne, spent a lot of time looking at this, drove through the site yesterday and just try to, with this in my lap, I was parked, you know, I wasn't moving, but, you know, trying to envision it, and I think a lot of good points, I think it's well thought out. I guess kind of while well, we're in the comment period, uh, because I've spent a lot, of, most of my career working at times in the affordable housing area, I don't want us to confuse, and I appreciate the excerpt in the consideration for the market demand, but let's not just my personal soapbox is let's not every time we look at a facility think that we're dealing with an affordable housing issue because I wish you all the success with the project, but I don't foresee that there's going to be a lot of folks who are at 80% LMI, low moderate income, who would be defined as in the affordable housing market who are going to be affordable affording to live here. There's no assisted uh, living community, uh, however you want to define it, within the town of Cary that would meet any of the criteria for affordable housing, whether it be 80% LMI, 100% LMI, et cetera. Um, and it's just a statement of understanding the market may not be able to address that, but uh, even though we see that in here, there are long waits for assisted living facilities, and, you know, and the market will continue to grow to address where the market rate can, but uh, let us not confuse or think that we're now dealing with the, with the affordable housing situation. Um, that's just that. Um, I had a little thought about the hotel. I think great points by Sally on that. Uh, even though there are six hotels within one mile of the hospital, um, some of those are in walking distance. Um, but again, I think the market will dictate whether there's hotels or offices there, and I could see it would be a great amenity having been through some of the same thing that a lot of other folks have. So um, that's, those are my comments. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other Statements on this motion. If not, then all those in favor of the motion uh, by Mr. Rogers, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Say no. The motion carries unanimously. That is our only agenda item for the evening, so uh, we could make a motion to adjourn and then all run out and get bread and milk and get ready for the <laughs> storm. <laughs> so would someone care to make that motion? Motion uh, to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Thank you and good evening. Yeah.
production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.